If you would go and take the word of God and turn to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. And um, Pastor began this series on the book of Hebrews. It's been wonderful. I really enjoy it. And I'm really happy when Pastor allows me to preach from his pulpit. And um, I'm so happy what God is doing in our lives. Amen. In our church family here. And the Pastor talked about perspective. And, uh, you know, the word of God has a way of bringing us the right perspective. Getting our mind on what it should be on. Things that matter. And the souls of men and women and children is what matters. And that's the perspective we need as we look to Jesus Christ, as we think about him. And um, in this Hebrews chapter 13, I've been, um, the topic has been how to live the Christian life. How to live the Christian life and getting our minds on the right perspective, our eyes on the right perspective, the Lord Jesus Christ. And how to live the Christian life, and it deals with different things. Um, the, verse 1 in chapter 13, we talked about a couple weeks ago. It says, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. We spoke about that and how we are to let that continue. And the only one that can stop that brotherly love from continuing in our lives is us. We need to let that continue as Christ works in us, as the Holy Spirit uh, desires to work through us to reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let love continue. We talked about also be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Uh, be kind to people you see that have a need. Five, because the Bible says, for some have entertained angels at unawares. We talked about Abraham doing that, and also um, Gideon doing that. But be not forgetful. Don't forget. It's easy to forget to be a blessing. We should not forget to be a blessing to others around us, to those that we see have a need. The Bible says, if any man see his brother have a need, and he shows up his bowels of compassion, how dwelt the love of God in him? How dwelt the love of God in us if we shut up the compassion for others around us? When we see somebody, see somebody that has a need, and we can meet that need. God has given us the blessing to do it. We should do that. We talked about that last time in the book of Hebrews also. We talked about remember them that are in bonds. And there's that word remember. And of course, be not forgetful in verse 2. And remember there in verse 3. It says that we have a problem forgetting and not remembering. We need to remember certain things. Amen. And the way we remember is we get into God's word. We pray and we ask God to speak to us through his word. He says, speaks to us through his word. And we speak to him through prayer. And we remember what, what, what it's all about. We remember what the Lord Jesus Christ has called us to do. Not to forget them that are in bonds. We talked about those in other parts of the world who are, uh, they put their lives at stake to proclaim Jesus Christ in the gospel. Uh, their, own, their lives are taken in other, other, other countries like Iran or uh, other, other countries that are, are hostile toward the word of God. How that we need to remember those that are in bonds as to be in bond with them because they're our brothers and sisters in Christ. We should have that desire, that burden that they have. They're giving their lives. We're here in America. We are protected. What are we doing with this wonderful freedom that God has given us? We need to reach out in missions. Amen. The wonderful missions conference we had, we tied that into this. Be not forgetful. Be not, and remember them that are in bonds. And God help us to do that. And we stopped at verse 4. And verse 4 is, in how to live the Christian life, we're going to be talking about marriage tonight. We're going to be talking about the Christian marriage and the importance of it and what that's all about. So we're going to read verses 4 through verse 6. And let's read the Word of God tonight. Verse 4, the Word of God reads, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. It says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man should do unto me. Yeah. That last part of that verse there, that last phrase, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I talked about last time that it doesn't say we shall not fear what man might or might maybe do, but what he shall. As you live the Christian life, as we live for Jesus Christ, you can expect resistance. The devil hates it. The devil hates to see a servant of God serving God, amen, and, and, and being a Christian. You know, we think about our first love. When I say that word first love, many of you think of your antenna goes up and you're thinking about where that's mentioned in the book of Revelation to the seven churches. Now that they have, some of these churches have left their first love. I think about marriage, I think about love. But our first love, of course, what the Bible's talking about is our our when we were born again, when we called upon Jesus Christ for salvation, we accepted him as our Savior, our personal Savior. 
our King and our Lord. That is our first love. And God, help us to remember our first love, to, to put him first in everything. He is our first love, and everything that we have is a result, everything that we have is good as a result of God's love for you and for me. God, help us to remember our first love, not to forget our first love, to keep Jesus Christ first in everything in our lives. We need to keep him first in our marriages. True love begins with Christ. Marriage begins with Christ. The family begins with Christ. Church begins with Christ. Everything good begins with the Lord Jesus Christ. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, the Bible says, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift we have, every perfect gift, is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I think about the gift of my marriage tonight. What God has given me. First and foremost, my first love, that's salvation. That's the most wonderful gift that I've ever received in my whole life was life from Jesus Christ, was freedom. Known him as my Savior and the work that he's done in my life and brought me to himself. His love is an everlasting love. <laughs> it's a love that never stops. And with loving kindness, he's drawn us to himself. Amen? With loving kindness, he drew me when I was six years old, Pastor, in 1979. My first love. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. A day I'll never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. With joy I'm telling, he made all the darkness depart. Shadows dispelling. With joy I'm telling, he made all the darkness depart. Dispelling the shadows. The light of God coming into my life. Amen? Getting rid of all the fear. And as Christians, we no longer need to fear anything. Yeah. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. And God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. To have these wonderful things God has given us, because he is our first love, the power, the power of God in my life, in your life tonight, of love and of a sound mind. To actually be able to really love somebody. I mean, I mean to really love them. We may say we love, we may say we know what love is, but we have no idea until we know Jesus Christ what true love is really all about. Until he introduces that love into our lives through different circumstances and different things, he proves his love to us through his word. And he showed his love to me by giving me a wonderful, wonderful wife. And I praise God for her tonight. I praise God for my dear wife, Jennifer. So tonight, in regards to how to live the Christian life, we read that marriage is honorable, a marriage is honorable in all. And marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. Marriage is honorable. And all that means among all. So marriage, being honorable, it means that God, the author of marriage, and all those who name the name of Jesus Christ should and must honor marriage. That means we honor marriage whether you're married or whether you're not married. We still honor marriage. It's between one man and one woman. Amen. That is marriage. God instituted marriage. He started marriage. This is a wonderful gift, a wonderful tool that God has given us. God help us not to take it for granted. It's honorable. It means it's precious. It's valuable. It's beloved. Honorable means that it's precious. It's valuable. It's precious. It's beloved. When we go through God's word, we find precious, exceeding great and precious promises, and we find the promise of marriage and what it represents, what it means. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Gave himself for it. So marriage is a mystery. But it's, marriage also shows the relationship between Jesus Christ and his church. Marriage is honorable. God, God blessed us with this wonderful gift of marriage. I've heard a preacher, I can't remember who, one time made an illustration of when Adam was put to sleep and God said, it was not good for man to be alone. And he saw that in my life too. It's not good for Matt to be alone. He needs some help, amen? He needs a lot of help. <laughs> and he chose Jennifer, God help her, amen? And you too, if you're married in here tonight or if, if, you're, if you're looking forward to that day of marriage, it's a, something important to consider and, and to seek God for because it's a gift. It's a wonderful gift. 
or you've been married and maybe your loved one has gone on to home to be with the Lord. He's in heaven or she's in heaven waiting for you. Amen. Marriage is wonderful. Marriage is honorable. And God is the author. We must disengage from anything that is against the purity and holiness in our marriages. We must disengage from anything that's against the purity and holiness in our marriage. The bed undefiled. God help us to do that. God help us to, to be to be well pleasing to him in our marriage. When you brought my wife to me, it was such a wonderful, wonderful thing to happen to me. Some of you have been married for years. I know the actors have been married for what, 75 years? I can't remember. 72 years of marriage. Imagine that. 72 years. And that's the way we'll be too, by the, by the grace of God, if the Lord doesn't come back again. Amen? 72 years. I couldn't, you know, that's just amazing. And uh, Mr. Acker, I believe he's 94, 95 years old. Now I was just wanting to, just to encourage him. And I said, well, you guys got married when you were just young ones then, huh? They love each other. And that's a picture in this world today of Jesus Christ and his love for the church. Marriage is honorable. It's honorable. We need to pray for one another's marriage in here. And those who one day will be married. <laughs> I pray for my son to read the right woman, although he's just about 14 years old. You know, when he was six, seven years old, we, we said he wanted a wife. It was funny. It was the funniest thing in the world. We well, had a good example in his mother because she is a great wife, I tell you. But he said, I want a wife. What do you want for Christmas? I want a wife. <laughs> it's way too early, Elijah, way too early. <laughs> you know, but praise God for the wonderful gift of marriage and what the Word of God has to say about marriage. You know, the devil hates marriage. He hates marriage. No statistics are necessary or needed to know that the devil hates marriage. He opposed, he's opposed to it. He seeks to destroy it. He wants to pollute it. He wants to twist it to the destruction of the family. He hates marriage because God authored marriage. And he'll do everything he can to pollute it, to destroy it. How important is marriage? How much time should we focus in our marriage? Your marriage takes constant work. Constant work. You, don't, you can ask the actors, they will tell you. It takes continual, constant work, constant upkeeping, showing love one to another, a growing in Christ together, being one as God desires for us to be one in our marriage together, serving God together, winning souls together, glorifying Jesus Christ together, lifting him up together, coming to church together, amen? And showing that joy and that love to those around us in the great example of marriage that we've been given. Oh, God, help us to honor marriage. Once again, marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. But the Bible says here, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Fornication and adultery are the two main things the devil uses to destroy a marriage. Two main things he will use. And don't fall for the trap. Do not fall for the trap. Stay true to the Lord. Stay true to him. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that so shall, he, so shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit, will of the spirit reap life everlasting. And it says, and be not weary in well doing. For in due season you shall reap, if you faint not. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give in. Love your spouse to the very end. To the very end, love them. Don't be worried and well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. And you can see it here in these verses, what it's used for, what marriage is used for is to bring people to Jesus Christ. To bring people to Christ. That's what marriage is all about. God brought me and Jennifer together for one purpose. The first purpose is to honor him, to love him together, to grow together in our faith together, hand in hand. And as I mentioned, I forgot to mention the full uh, illustration is the rib taken from Adam was taken from his side. So that Eve would be by his side. They would serve God together side by side. Side by side. He didn't take the, the bone from Adam's foot for Adam to walk on his wife. 
He didn't take the bone from Adam's head for his wife to be above him. They were together, side by side, to serve God together. And to love one another. God, help us to love our spouse. God, help us to pray for one another. Pray for marriages, because the marriage is under attack, and it's been under attack for, from the very beginning. Once again, the devil wants to twist it. He wants to distort it. He wants to destroy what God has ordained that is good. He is anti-Christ. Everything God is for, the devil is against. And there's nothing more. He uses more than to destroy a nation or to destroy a church. To destroy a family is to bring divorce and to bring separation from the husband and the wife. It's such a hurtful thing to go through. I know many men that have gone through it. My dad went through it. He stayed faithful to my mom. He never remarried. But he told me, he said, Matthew, never blame me and your mom getting divorced on your mom. It was all my fault. He goes, Matthew, it was me. And he told me, he warned me. But he never, he never set his eyes on any other. He showed unconditional love to my mother through it all. He was there for us. He, made, he worked three jobs for me and my brother and my sisters so we can go to a Christian school up until high school. Then it got way too expensive and we had to go to the public. But praise God for the, what my parents sacrificed. And then the wonderful thing, praying when I was six years old that my mom and dad would get back together. Moving down to West Virginia, praise God. I, I used to hate the thought that we moved around a lot, but praise God that I was raised in West Virginia. Amen. I love it down there. I love it up here. And we moved around even to North Carolina for a long time. But God was with us. He never left us. He never forsook us. Amen. My dad also did what he had to do and taught us the word of God through it all. And the day that I was in an accident about 20 years ago, and that's how I met my wife, by the way, at Metro Health Hospital. Many of you know my testimony. I was left hit by a car in Valley City and life flight at Metro Health Hospital. Heart stopped beating twice in the helicopter on the way there. Damage was done to my head. There was already damage done, so that wasn't too bad. But they told me when I woke out of a coma, what happened? My dad was there, came up from North Carolina. My dad, dad and my mom were still separated at this time. He told me what happened. I knew where I would have been if I would have died. I'd be in the, I'd be in the arms of Jesus Christ but I didn't try even living for him. I didn't even try. I blamed God on everything on God. And he, was, he didn't do none of that stuff in my life. I did it to myself. And my parents, by the way, there's no perfect family. Amen? There's no perfect marriage. There's no perfect church. But we love one another. We forgive one another because that's what we're supposed to do as a family. God help us. That's what we do in a marriage. There's no perfect marriage. We love one another either anyway. When we get offended, it's because our self is in the way. But to be a true leader, I've learned, and I'm learning, still learning. I got a lot to go, a long way to go. I need to lead and be the first to say, I'm sorry. I need to lead to be the first to say, let's pray. Let's seek God together. Let's go to church. And there are times that I have not done that. But God is merciful. And by him, brother, all things consist. Sam preached Sunday night a great message on walking with the Lord from pretty much walking in his truth. And in that verse, in the verses that you read, he says, by him, all things consist. All things are held together by, by God, by the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what that means? That means my marriage is held together by Jesus Christ. Our lives, our very atoms in our body are held together by Jesus Christ. Everything is held together by him. Because he is merciful. He loves us. Well, in the hospital, I got out and I prayed a prayer. <laughs> There's no such thing as making a deal with God. I said, Lord, if you've done so much, you've been so merciful to me, I go, I, I, I won't get married if you don't want me to. I'll stay single. My last day in the hospital, I was in a, in a wheelchair. I went down to get my belongings, and the admitting sec secretary was Jennifer. At the time, Jennifer Douglas. And that's how we met. And I, I, I just, I, there was no mistaking what that was all about. As soon as, I seen, as soon as I looked into her beautiful blue eyes, and she has beautiful eyes, by the way, I was like, wow. 
praise the Lord. God is so good to me. I, mean, I, I didn't know, you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm just glad. I, I just, she goes, she asked me for my belongings, and I'm sorry if I repeat this testimony. I just love repeating it. I go, well, all I had on me was my wallet and uh, a pager, back when pagers were used, because <laughs> I was on call, and it's just for heating and cooling. Everything was cut off. I was knocked out of my shoes. <laughs> and I got those belongings from Jennifer. She goes, what's your name? I go, my name is Matthew Townhill. She looked at me. She goes, oh, we've been praying for you. This is somebody I never met in my life. Oh, we've been praying for you. Do you go to Cleveland Baptist Church? No, I used to when I was a kid. Because you've been on the prayer list. We've been praying for you. People from Cleveland Baptist Church that I've never known in my life, never met, came and visited me when I was in the hospital. And that's how she knew me. Because she was praying for me before she even met me. She's praying for God to have mercy on me and my recovery. And that's how we got married. The rest is history, amen? Less than a year, engaged and married, ready to go, amen? This, you know, I spent my 29th birthday in the hospital, 30th birthday in the hospital, and I was like, man, you know, God, praise God for his mercy in my life, for my wife. And by the way, my parents got remarried through that accident too. After all those years, praying as a child, Lord, please bring my mom and dad back together. You know, it doesn't usually happen. And I was okay. I learned as I gone on. It's okay. But that doesn't happen when God made it happen. Amen. Now they love the Lord. They're together in West Virginia. Marmet, serving the Lord together. Of course, my mom is battling cancer now. She's, she's in remission. And God is doing a miracle there through prayer. Amen. But our marriage is so vitally important. My wife is so vitally important to me. Read verse 5. Verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. It says, Let your conversation or your way of life be without covetousness or wanting things that, that God doesn't want you to have. The flesh wants and wants and wants, and, and the things that we're not supposed to have, the flesh will go after. The flesh wants it. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness. And I believe it's tied into our, our wife, our marriage. Never want anything outside your spouse. Ever. And so the devil, and remember what God has said about whoremongers and adulterers. Never want anything outside our spouse. God has given us so much. And my wife, to be content, by the way, to be content means to be held. To be held within limits. Be content means to be held within limits, and limits of the God's word. We know what's right, we know what's wrong through God's word. Our marriage is strengthened through God's word. We're within limits, we're in an umbrella of protection, according to the promises of God, the one who, by him all things consist. We're held within limits. We're held within limits. To be content means to be held or to be satisfied to be satisfied with what God has given us. I had to come to the point to be satisfied when I was single. Before God, I could move on to the next step and to put my eyes to Jesus Christ. He had to put me in the hospital bed to get my attention. And he did. And he's given me so many wonderful gifts. A son that we prayed for for seven years. A wonderful son who loves the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. It gets better and better. Amen. You know, life is in a bowl of cherries. Amen. You know what I mean by that? Sometimes there are arguments in the marriage. You know, that happens. That's not abnormal. That happens because we're human. This flesh is always getting in the way. But God gives us that special gift in our spouse just to love unconditionally, even as Christ loved the church. To love unconditionally, to love sacrificially, to love with a Calvary love, the love that's willing to sacrifice and to give up everything for your spouse because that's a picture of Jesus Christ in the church. God help us. And he does through his Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? To do exactly what he's called to do. God would not be good if he told us to do something we cannot do, then God would not be good, would he? But we can do all things through Christ. And the marriage is such a powerful weapon that the, God wants to use 
against the devil in his kingdom. The devil, he knows he hates it. He knows what God can do through a marriage of two that love the Lord and love one another. And they're not going to allow anything to creep into their marriage. Amen? Yes, that's what God desires in our life. That's what we can have. And praise God that God is going to give that to us as we seek him. Amen? Amen. He does. My wife is a manifestation of God's grace to me. See, his grace is sufficient. His strength is made perfect in weakness. He brought me to my wife, and she helps me in my weak, weak areas, and I help her in her weak areas, and we're one together. And God's grace is sufficient. That means that's enough. That's all we need. Be content with what God has given us. Be content with our spouse. Let them know we love them. Amen? Amen. Tell, I need to tell Jennifer more that I love her, how much I love her, what she means to me. I need to pray for my wife. I need to love her unconditionally. No matter what, no matter what, you never stop loving your spouse. Jesus Christ, he hates divorce. He hates it. And a lot of people have been hurt by it. They've been there before. Doesn't mean it's over. God's grace continues. His grace is sufficient. Amen? For his strength is made perfect in our weakness. His grace is sufficient. And my wife is an example of God's grace to me. Grace is receiving something that you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting something that you do deserve. And I was given my wife. I married up. Amen? I married up. Amen, Sam? We married up, don't we? <laughs> Praise God. Pastor, we married up, right? That means our wives are so much better. Amen. God is so good to us. And I'm so happy to be married. I told my wife, I thought she was going to be in here this morning. I said, I want to use you for an example. I want you to come up. I was going to have her come up. I was going to put my arm around her. She goes, I'm in kids' club. I was like, yeah, rats. <laughs> She loves it when I do that, you know. <laughs> oh, she'll be watching. I'm getting a lot of brownie points for this, brother. I'll tell you what. No, I was playing. No, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to have the wife that I have, to have this wonderful life that I have in Jesus Christ. So I can be an encouragement to those who are struggling in that area. Amen? We got this new um, Facebook that the church has started just, just last week. And couples for Christ, and how we can just share with one another what God has done in our life, what He's doing in our life, and how much our spouses mean to us. The devil hates it. He hates it. Because we get fired up, you know? <laughs> when your spouse is behind you, you're behind your spouse, and I, I feel like I could do anything. Amen? Anything. My wife's behind me, I can do anything. I, I don't matter what it is. If I'm behind her, then she can do anything. And we can do all things through Christ. And God loves us. That's what he desires for us. Marriage is honorable. Marriage is honorable. And let our conversation be without covetousness and be content and happy with such things as we have. For he has said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know, marriage, that's marriage right there, isn't it? I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'll never turn. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never want to be away from you, Jennifer, my wife. Because that's a picture of Jesus Christ in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. And does the devil love it? No, he hates it. God help us to hate divorce. Amen? And to love marriage. So me and my wife together may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Mm -hmm. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You know, there's a boldness in the marriage that's strong in the Lord. The faith that's deep in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a boldness there. There's a courage that comes from the Holy Spirit. And you're unstoppable through Jesus Christ. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Amen. God help us to desire and to want to work at our marriages. To work at it. If you're not married, the Bible says marriage is honorable in all. That means among all. Pray for marriages around you. Pray for those you know are married and may be struggling or, or encourage them if they're looking or talking about divorce. Tell them, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I love the Lord. Amen. Love God. Praise God for that boldness that we can say the Lord is our helper. And by him all things consist.
He's helping my marriage today. Amen. He's helping your marriage. You know, he's helping our young people find the right woman and our young ladies to find the right man. He's there. And marriage is a powerful tool in the hands of God. That's the way it's supposed to be. Let's pray for one another's marriage. Amen. Let's pray for the married couples in our church family. Let's name them. Let's write down who they are and receive that wonderful blessing that God will bless us with if we do that. Lord, help us. Amen. Marriage is undefiled. A marriage is honorable, but undefiled. God, help us to have a, per, a per, marriage that's well-pleasing to the Lord, perfect. That's where we're stopping in Hebrews tonight as we, uh, as we think about and consider what the Word of God gives us and how to live the Christian life and how important marriage is. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful gift from God. Salvation is wonderful. Marriage is wonderful. And what God has in store for us, the best is yet to come. I say it, I may sound like a broken record, but good. Listen, the best is yet to come for the Christian. The best is yet to come. As we look to Jesus Christ in the eyes of faith, our marriage is going to get stronger. The church is going to get stronger. And we're going to see things happen that we thought was not possible. If we believe. Amen. Amen. If we believe, God can do anything. Amen? Amen? Let's pray.